All right, let me record this. Hi, everybody. It's two o'clock. It's Freckle Pasta Hair. We have an appointment. Today, we're going to create a custom design uploading a PDF. We are recording. Um, I think we've got, one, two, four, five, six, five, we got about 20 people joining us. I did play with this this weekend. Um, played with it again a little bit last night. Um, this is going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. It's definitely a little bit finicky, um, and it does take a little bit of finesse. So it should be an interesting learning experience for all of us. Let me quickly share my screen. Okay, can I get a thumbs up? Can you see create a custom design using a PDF upload? Awesome. Yes. Thank you guys. Okay, so very few slides today actually, because we're gonna spend the majority of the time inside of command. For those of you who are new to joining online training with me, my name is Kelly Finnegan. I am the regional tech trainer for the Carolinas region. Um, this is day, I don't even know, nine, 10, doing um, online Zoom trainings. Uh, if any of us thought that March was the longest month in history, I think we're all gonna find out that April's even longer, um, which is okay. We're all um, pushing forward together and we're all in this together. We've got some Zoom rules, so definitely if you've never done this before, then these might be a little new to you. However, most of us have now probably um, earned a Zoom ear and half a Zoom brain. Please go into the chat and say hello and where you're from. It gets your fingers warmed up so that you can also uh, get comfortable posting questions and it lets everybody else know where you're from. Um, I am uh, based my license is hung in Chapel Hill. I live in Apex, North Carolina, so that's where I'm from. Uh, please also use your mute liberally. I've muted everyone to start, pretty much, I think. Um, please use that, though. We are all working from home. We've all got background noises to contend with here, children and, and furry kids and, I don't know, everything else that's happening in our neighborhoods. Um, do feel free, though, to unmute yourself and ask questions. Just pipe in. There will be places where I ask, and there will be times when I get so lost in what I'm doing, I forget to ask you've to, if you have any questions. So just pipe in. It's totally fine. If you see that someone asks a question in the chat and you know the answer, please do answer it. We are KW. We come from contribution. We give as much as, if not more, than we receive. And if you guys, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I want to see how many faces do I have. I got about half. Half of you have your video on and the other half of you don't. So here's what I'm gonna ask. <coughs> Everybody who does not have their video on, if you are fully dressed, that we can see for that matter. Unless, I don't, I don't really care what's happening on the bottom half. Um, there's like a party in the front and a, I don't know, whatever. I want you to show your videos, please. It's a lot richer of experience if everybody can see each other's faces. It's almost like being in the room together in a training room. So please turn them on. I promise you guys are beautiful. I see a few more coming on. Good. Okay, I'm gonna go back and share again. Um, although I think actually that probably is my last slide. Because it's tech, uh, we will encounter an issue. And instead of getting frustrated, we're gonna say, we, Robert Flynn's already on it. Yay, I wanna see everybody else. Say, we, in the background, I see all, all your hands up. Good, we're not gonna get frustrated, we're just gonna move right on past it. We're gonna take a deep breath, we're gonna save where we're at, refresh and try again. All right, uh, this is my last slide. So, and I do this every single time, you guys, uh, 24 seven resources available to you. And in fact, one of these, um, it's actually not listed here, but I'm gonna show you one, because a few of you uh, may wanna come back and watch the video, you may just wanna power through it on your own. If you go to KW Connect, right now when you go to Connect, it actually is driving everybody to the pivot page, which is kind of cool. However, you can still navigate everywhere except the basic homepage, because that's just constantly redirecting to pivot. However, when you hover over technology, the second link down is Command Your Business. It is the best applet by applet, module by module training for command. You can learn the entirety of the command platform in three weeks with 30 minutes a day. If you give it an hour a day, you'll learn it in a week and a half. This is a constant resource for you guys. It is a mix of both videos and how-to step-by-step articles with screenshots. You can also get directly to those articles, one of which I'm gonna show you, at answers.kw.com. If you've never been there, write it down, bookmark it. It is your friend. Facebook groups like KW Command, Command Your Conversion. These are great groups. I guarantee if you've got a question, someone else has already asked it and several someone's have already answered it. So you don't even have to ask it again. You can just search and someone's gonna show you what they've done or tell you what they've encountered 
or tell you what's working for them um, and little hacks and workarounds that people have found. The schedule for our Carolinas training is available on the KW Carolinas region public page. Please go like that and follow it. And my two favorite YouTube channels are Scott Leroy Marketing and Marty Miller. Um, again, you can learn just about everything with command with them. Um, both of them have short videos and long videos. It's really up to you. Okay, are we ready for a demo? Yes, all right, let's do it. So I'm gonna change the screen I'm sharing. And we are gonna go into um, command. Okay, because we're going to be doing a custom designs, uh, we're actually gonna work completely in the designs applet right now. The designs applet, on the left-hand side, for those of you who are new to command or new to these trainings, if you're not sure what an applet icon stands for, you can hover over it and the little accessibility menu will come up. Alternatively, you can click the red KW and the entire menu will pop out for you as a reminder. At any time when you're watching someone do trainings, if you're like, where are they? How'd they get there? All of the applets are gray until you're in one and then it turns blue. Once you're inside that particular applet, if there are multiple tabs, whatever one the trainer is on will be underlined in blue. So blue is your friend. All right, so designs is one of the only applets in command where you are not looking for a bright, a bright blue button in the top right. You are actually looking for a bright blue button in the bottom right. I think at some point they may change this because there's a search field up there though. I think they're trying not to compete with it. So we're going to create a design using someone else's design because plagiarism is of course the highest form of flattery we're going to use somebody else's something and um tweak it to be our own so i have seen in the pivot shift um, facebook group and every morning i listen to james shaw he's how i start my day and every day around lunchtime i listen to guest speakers on the regional thrive call I sort of start my day in the middle of the day and then I end my day with my fam. Um, I've been seeing a lot of really cool stuff. One of them was uh, agents are creating these market stat um, images that they share that is like in the last 24 hours or the last week. And those are awesome. Uh, you can't really replicate that with what we have inside of command. Our market snaps are, are super cool. Uh, and our landing pages are cool. They are, they are neighborhood defined. You can't actually self-define an area that it's gonna pull stats for you from. So what I thought was I would create some version of that, make it as a PDF and then upload it to show you guys if someone has shared one with you in that Facebook group or somewhere else, um, a PDF that you like or something that you like that you printed to PDF, you can upload that in. So I went ahead and created one. I also saw where some agents have been creating these one pagers that talk about the virtual buying process. So I created one of those as well so that I could upload it as a quote PDF because I actually could not find PDF versions of those. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys those two and then you're gonna need to unmute and tell me which one you want me to build. So let me show you real quick what I did. So I've got two PDFs. Can you guys see the virtual buying program on my screen? Yes. So here's something, here's one thing, um, totally lifted and stolen from someone else. The second item is a, a market stats item. Again, I'm gonna be building this, right? You've gotta have your own something. Something you found or maybe you received in the mail because we all get those flyers from agents that were like, most of the time we probably just throw away. Some of the time we might look at it and go, oh, I don't like that, I like one of those. And maybe we shove it in a drawer. Uh, so you're gonna build your own thing. I just wanna know which one would you guys prefer? You want me to do the market stats or the virtual buying? Now's the time to vote, go. Virtual buying. I like the uh, market stats. Virtual buying. Virtual buying. Yeah, virtual buying. Virtual buying. Virtual buying. Virtual, buying. virtual stats. <laughs> Please. Virtual. I got one vote of each in the chat. It's not going to work for me, guys. It's not a majority. Somebody speak out loud, please. Virtual, virtual buying. Virtual, virtual buying. buying. Oh, my goodness, now I can't hear anybody. Hold on, I'm fixing it. Okay. All right, what are you guys saying? Virtual buying. Virtual buying. Virtual, virtual buying. buying. Virtual buying. Virtual buying it is. Virtual buying. 
Statistical <laughs> buying. Okay, so we're gonna do virtual buying. That's what I'm hearing. All right, <laughs> let's go share. I'm gonna go back over to command. All right, you guys. So, I am again. I'm inside of the design applet. Looks like a little whiteboard with a marker. In there, I'm gonna click the blue plus sign. And then I've got choices. I could create email, social, print, video, or I can import a PDF. So I am going to click import PDF and then click next. So Kelly, is this PDF available for us in somewhere else? Can we do I'm it? happy to share it, yes. Virtual buying share. Yeah, I'm trying to think where I got it. I think I saw in our Facebook group, Robert, um, Kelly Malloy, the United Home Group made one. Oh, right and then okay. I saw one in the pivot group too, in the shift pivot group as well. I've, I've seen several. And it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging pretty well with the market stats from the stuff that I've gotten from James Shaw's page. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, uh, but I would like the, I would like the virtual buying thing. So what, what are you doing with it? Where'd it go? So I'm in command. I'm in designs. I clicked the blue plus sign and then I clicked import PDF and next. And now it's brought me into where I get to drop PDF files that I want to be imported. Right. Toby's asking the same question though. Do you, are you, do you have this file somewhere where we can grab it and work with it while you talk to us? No. Okay. No, sirs. Um, I'm happy to share it afterward. You guys go to your computer and find a PDF anywhere on your computer and upload it. Okay. Doesn't matter which one. Just pick one. The idea is to play and practice because I guarantee you, no matter which one you pick, it is going to require finesse. Each one that I tried and played with requires quite a bit of finesse. Yeah, I, I haven't had a, I haven't had luck with this. That's why I wanted to sit in on your expertise because I've been trying mm -hmm. to plot PDFs here and it's not working. So what's, uh, so finesse me. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. Let's do it though. Okay, so I am going to click. I've opened up an explorer window on my computer here. I might just get, let me just do a screen share so you can see my screen. Can you see my explorer folder, yes? Yes. Here. Okay, so I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna drag it over to where it says drag and drop and I'm gonna just drop it right there. And you can see it says that it's importing it, it's creating the design and it's putting it right over here on the far left hand side. And hey, it's gonna Kelly. take a minute. Okay, while it's doing that, this is Jenny. I Hi, went Jenny. to, how are you? Good. Go governors. Um, <laughs> we found out we went to middle school in the same town. How weird is that? So anyway. We went to Godwin, that was you? Yeah, that's me. Ah, that's awesome. I was a I cheerleader from. I was a cheerleader for Fred Lynn. What? what? Girl. So cool, okay. Okay. I went... <laughs> I went into designs yes. and now it's doing it again, but I clicked the, the blue plus sign PDF and it just took me back to the designs page with the different things that are already there. So my suggestion to you is going to be either to log out and try logging back in and try it again, or okay. you might want to clear your cache in your browser. If you're not incognito, you want to try that. The way that command works best, you guys, is in Chrome Incognito, every time. Okay. And if it's not working for you, honey, I would log out, close the browser, reopen it again, and try again. Um, it's definitely, we're finding more and more um, with so many people hitting command right now, and with so many people hitting the same applets constantly, they are working on bandwidth. Um, it's definitely a bit of a challenge. I'm gonna keep moving forward because you can always go back and watch the video again. Okay, so you guys should be able to see the document is now here and it's got a little red icon in the top right corner. That means that something is wrong with it that I have to fix before I'm going to be able to edit it. So I'm going to click that and it's going to tell me something is missing. So your PDF is missing a specific measurement unit. So I'm going to, the three dots at the bottom, I'm going to click that and click fix. Because I have a problem, as noted by the caution triangle, I'm going to click the three dots and click, oops, 
fix. And it's gonna open and it's gonna ask me to select a unit. So the recommendations from uh, KWRI are if you are going to use this digitally, then you're looking at pixels. If you're going to use it in print, then you are gonna look at inches, millimeters, or centimeters. And it depends on what your goals are and things like that. I can tell you that so far I played with it in two different ways. I did pixels and inches because we're not doing a whole lot in person anymore. I'm probably doing a lot more digitally, even our listing uh, presentations and buyer presentations. Um, I am going with pixels and I'm gonna click continue. Now, the first time you guys do that, it may actually prompt you about fonts as well. So when I played over the weekend, it did not recognize any of the fonts that I had used when I created these documents um, inside of PowerPoint. So you're going to have to pick out of the list of fonts for each of them, and then there'll be a checkbox for you allowing you to say, do this every time moving forward. That doesn't mean you can't change the fonts once you open it. You can, it just needs to know how to interpret them. So now that little red triangle has disappeared and it is ready for me to update. So I'm going to click it. I double clicked it to open up. And now that design is going to open and give me the ability to start making some, some tweaks on it. Now, some of the things I figured out and I didn't go in and fix them yet because I wanted to make sure to talk to you guys about it. Um, and so I had two thoughts here. The first one was, I created this document and I, I didn't do it thinking about the fonts that exist inside of command. If I were going to go create flyers and marketing materials that I wanted to share with agents moving forward, I would probably pick fonts that actually exist in command so that when it imports it in, it's not having to do a conversion and then it doesn't take the end user as much um, love and effort and labor to make it right. For the most part, however, if I create a document, I'm probably not gonna pull it into command anyway, right? I created it in PowerPoint, I'm gonna update it there because it's easier for me. I don't have to pull it into any other platform to do it and I can create images right there. The reason I'm telling you guys this is that eventually you're gonna have something that someone else shared with you that's a PDF they created and you need to know that whatever fonts they used may or may not be apparent, may not be among the list of recognized fonts inside of command. So I'm going to show you what I mean by this. When I, now that this is here, I can actually go click any of these things and make edits to them. And again, it's finicky. I've got to click around until I get to something I actually want to change. So like right here, I can actually change the words virtual tours right in there. Does everybody see what I'm doing? I can actually make these changes now that I'm here. I've got to just click it and play with it. So you've got to click and keep clicking until you can get it to be your friend. Notice up here, the virtual one, because again, it didn't really understand the font. Each of these, it actually sees as almost a separate box. So VI is like one box. RT appears to be another. So I have to literally just do a little bit of squishing to move things over here. Hey, Kelly, can I interrupt you one quick second? You sure can. For the people that are looking for one to work on while she's talking, there actually is one in uh, Pivot Shift. Um, it's called COVID-19 Marketing. So if you go to Pivot Shift Facebook and go to their files section on the lower left, click on that and it'll open up the files. I think, I, I think it's on page two of what's available. Of the but, files? Yeah, but it's called COVID-19 Marketing and it's, it's similar to what Kelly's doing right now. And I just dropped it in and it did, it did load it. Nice. I can't see it yet. You, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. So you can see it's a little finicky here. So I might actually just delete that part out and go pick one of these and get rid of the others because it's probably going to be easier for me to just make an adjustment inside of this one. And then I can make the whole thing go longer. But this is the kind of thing, you guys, where you've got to get in and play with it. So when you pull it in, to be able to edit it, understand that this, um, this is actually pretty sophisticated for what it is. It, it really allows you to do quite a lot. It just doesn't always recognize every font. So it, you may find, like this home buying program, I can see that's the whole one. So thankfully, I don't have to retype that whole one out. What I may want to do, however, 
is change the font size. So I may decide, so I don't have to retype this one. It's currently on 54. If I bring it down to 48, does that fit? Not quite. 44, almost there. And this is, it's the kind of thing you guys, where you, you really only get good at this if you're playing with it. So the more I played with it over the weekend, the better and more comfortable I got with it. And it did take me some time and I'm, I'm, I'm fairly tech savvy. I'm also, um, I tend to make these kinds of documents or used to all the time. It, even with me, it took some time, some, some playing. Uh, here's the other thing I'll tell you guys, I would never attempt to do this without a mouse. I would never attempt to do it on my trackpad. Now I am a mouse person when I'm gonna work on anything that I need to have a graphic appeal, I will use a mouse because it is easier to click and drag than my fat fingers on my trackpad or my nails get in the way. Or you know, sometimes when you're typing, you just hover over the trackpad and all of a sudden the mouse has now moved somewhere else on the page. So that's one tip I would tell you guys is definitely use a mouse. A mouse is your friend. A lot of these though can really easily be fixed just by adjusting the text size. So is everybody getting a feel here for what I'm doing? Like if there's something on it you don't want anymore, it's someone else's logo, you could just delete it. And it's gonna leave behind an image, uh, a logo image for you. If I'm like, well, wait a minute, I actually don't wanna delete it. Let me undo that. Let me see, for example, that's a logo. Does it recognize that it's a logo and will it let me replace it? So I've clicked it. I'm gonna go over to the logos side where I have my logos. And if I wanted to replace it, say with this one, will it do it? Okay, so it's not recognizing it as a logo for replacement. And when I hover over the logo, I'm not getting a, the circle which allows you to replace. So I would actually just have to delete it. And then, yeah, and I'll probably have to delete that placeholder too because it's seeing it as, it's reading it as an image rather than a logo. And then I could click that one and resize it and pull it in. However, I decided I wanted to do that because all the same library, all your library of images that you add in your, uh, inside of your designs applet will be there for you every time. So you don't, if you pull all your logos in the first time, then they'll be there for you every single time. You don't have to bring them in every time. But you can't do a circle now, uh, is that right? I like, see the ones on the left, choices well, are circles? Well, but they're not actually circles. They, they're, the placeholders are circles. Most of, um, like if I pull this one in, that's actually a square. The placeholder is just showing you a circle. If I wanted to change this to make it a circle, I probably need to upload a circle. When I uploaded mine, I uploaded a square. So if I want a circular version of my logo, I need to have it over here and pull it in as a circular version. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, one quick question. Yeah, I'm gonna see you real quick too. When, when you um, said that if there was something missing from your PDF, where did you go to correct that? And I'm sorry for asking after you the fact. Um, uh, well, I'm not sure what you mean by something missing. Well. I downloaded something from um, James Shaw, and when it's finally loaded, it's got that little red triangle that got oh, a... Oh, yeah. You have to click the three little dots at the bottom and click fix. Okay, got it. Thanks. Also, a quick question. Is it possible, since it's a different font, to highlight everything and change it to a font that's there? So uh, you can, yes, you can pick something. So let's say I'm gonna change, I wanna change all these fonts. I can't pick them all at the same time. Okay. Nope, I can only do one at a time. And then I could go change the fonts to any one of the fonts that are in here. And here's what I would say, if I was going to create templates for, for agents to share out uh, and maybe someday sell cool stuff inside of Command, I would make sure that I built them with the fonts that Command recognizes. Okay, thanks. So I wouldn't be using, like, for example, I'm using Franklin, uh, Franklin Goody something on a lot of my stuff. Um, and it, that font doesn't exist in here. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to pick ones that actually exist here. 
so that there was a really nice marriage when it comes back. Um, most of the KW things that they create are Ariel, Helvetica Nui, or um, I think they use, they're using something um, like a Garamond as well. Um, so, so I Kelly, could. This is Toby Stevens. Hi, Toby. Got a question. What is the benefit of creating it in creating a document like this in command versus just uploading it as a PDF later on and, and sending that out? Is there is there a benefit to creating it in the design studio? Is it easier to parse out or send through the whatever's in command? So I, I think it's going to depend, right? Um, if you find something that you really like and everything on it is good with the exception of um, it's logoed with a different company and you want it to be your logo instead, then uploading the PDF and making those tweaks would likely be more efficient than trying to build it from scratch, either in command or somewhere else, right? Because not everybody is, um, is like, I, I'm not a graphic designer either, right? I have a decent eye, but not a very good one. I never have enough white space. I never do it quite right. Um, everything that other people create, it's better. Um, so if you're, if you found something that you really like and you only need to like change the number. So for example, Robert has found, um, a stats document where I think he likes most of it. And maybe he wants to trade out just the numbers each day, the information about which triangle, ML, which MLS he's pulling it from and his logo, he might leave everything else the same. So he'll upload that and make tweaks to it because there's only a handful of tweaks to make. Um, if you find something you like, but there's a lot on it you'd wanna change, then it might be faster to build from scratch, either in command or somewhere else. The advantage to doing it in command, as opposed to offline, like I will do in PowerPoint, because I'm super comfortable in it, is that command, um, the designs applet and the WeBrand platform has so many pictures, um, like good, really nice uh, real estate stock photos that you can use in any medium, whether it's digital or print, and we own them outright. Whereas you have to be really careful uh, when you use images that you find on the internet, even on free image websites. They're, they're very rarely free for any medium that you use. They might be free in print, but they're not free on a website that gets an unlimited number of users. And then you find yourself with like a $42,000 bill from an artist who's suing you. That would kind of suck. <laughs> Did that help, Toby? Okay. Also, a really quick question. To the right of virtual, those little computers over there? Yeah. They, yeah, okay. That's all I wanted to know. There's yeah, it looks like it's pulled them in as a whole image. So I could probably, I'm just going to look really quickly here. I hate how Zoom puts this thing right in the middle of my, um, let's move that. I wanted to see if I could break it up. I could probably copy it. Copy. That's oh, you can copy and paste, so just control C, control V. And then I wanted to see if I could crop it. I think I can. That's the symbol for mobile, tablet, and PC. Yes. Yeah, but we just want to see if she can change the combined. You know, yeah, the so other I'm thinking device. I can arrange, I can transform, I can duplicate that way. I don't see a crop feature, but I think, look, just dragging that crops it. So if you wanted to drop off the phone, Wait a minute, what'd you do? I just dragged the, the, the arrow. See where, once the box is highlighted, yeah. I can change the size by pulling up on a corner. I can change, I can crop pieces off by dragging the oh, white okay. box that's right there. Okay. It's still there, but it's hidden. So it's just that. hidden, right. So it's kind of cropping it, but kind of not. Sure which is that. cool because if you do it by accident, you can undo it really fast and easy. Thanks. Absolutely. Um, so I had pulled my name off earlier because it was bugging me that I'd have to like, they, it came in in several pieces. So just like I could do on any other design, I can go over here to text and I can just click my stuff and it'll start popping in in the document. And I can go fix it that way too. Because once you've added language a few times, or you could add language into your library by clicking add to library here. That way it's always available for you. And then you can change the font that it's in and the color. So now I don't have to type that over again. I could do that right there. And I could go up here and change the color to be maybe red. It's not hard to do you guys. Um, 
what's the phrase? Simple, not easy, or yeah. Um, it's, it's just finicky. You have to, you really got to play with it. And, and I do strongly recommend that you use a mouse. The mouse is your friend. I think it's great. It's a great tool. Okay, questions, ahas. I mean, I can keep playing with this for a while. Um, so Kelly, this is essentially, um, I guess it's a watered down version of, a, uh, oh, what's the Adobe program? Um, CS3 or what like a used to be called Photoshop? Page maker or something like that, mm -hmm. where you can just basically move things around. Yes, yes. Okay. And for those people who don't wanna pay the high price for Illustrator or CS3, <laughs> Um, because it is really expensive and you want to talk about hard to use learning CS3 yeah. or Photoshop or Illustrator. I, I swear they've written all of those, the, all the menus in a language that is for people who have an IQ of like 180, um, or just speak graphic speak. Um, cause they're, they're very hard to learn. Whereas this one, it's finicky, but very easy to learn it. You just have to play. You gotta be willing to click and play and not get frustrated. Now, now, once you get all that done and you're satisfied with it, how do you, how many different ways can you communicate? Can you use it as a um, an addition to an email that you sent out, a free form email, or does it need to be in a smart? You know, how many different ways can you use it? Sure. So once it's completed, um, now if you click done, it's just going to throw it into your library. If I want to download it, for example. Cause this is going to be, this is an eight and a half by 11 kind of document that I can download as an image. So just like anything else in the library, I can download it as a JPEG uh, with high quality or low quality. Excuse me. I can download it as a, a PNG, which uh, most of the time is like a transparent image uh, or we'll have a transparent back. If this one didn't have any back to it, you could actually make it well, with a transparent background. That's what that checkbox is there. This one does have a, a gray background. So if you click the transparent background, it's gonna look a little wonky on this one. Um, and then I could also download it as a PDF. Once you download it, you can do whatever you want with it. Once you save it in here as well, you could pull it in anywhere that you can pull in designs today. So you can pull in designs into your, um, into emails. You can pull designs right now into campaigns. Um, I'm trying to think if I want it as an image and I wanted to add it to one of my web pages, um, or I wanted it as a, an updated PDF, I would probably download it, put it onto a Google drive in a folder that's open and then link to it on my web page. But once it's here and you save it to your computer as a PDF or an image, you can do anything you can with any other PDF or image. Um, and when it's inside designs and save, you can use it the way you would any other design that's inside of the designs applet. So it's, it's limitless uses really. That's really super. So I have a question over yes. on your, over on the left side under the KW is the templates and the text. So yes. apparently our, our, um, IT guy, um, saved all this stuff for me but now it just has our address it doesn't say it just has our property address it doesn't say Wilmington NC so how do I now I've moved all the saved stuff uh, from my library I've moved all that but I don't have Wilmington so how do I add a, a separate tax a different a new tax at the bottom do you see where I'm pointing to on my screen where it says add to library right so if I click that, then and the text I want to add is Wilmington, Wilmington. Really, I promise I can. <laughs> I can well, spell. It does get mixed up, <laughs> fingers. Um, and I don't like the way this is looking right now. So I want it in my text section. Interesting. It's not letting me right now. Hmm. So I wonder, could we? Let's see something. Um. Um, I've tried, I tried to change something else. When I went into add, I tried to change top, the Kelly. text. It's at the very top, Wilmington's there. Oh, it did go in. Oh, it did add? It okay. did. 
All right. Great. Now I don't want it there anymore. Thank you. Um, <laughs> how do I get rid of it? Undo. I don't think that's going to work. Nope. That's just going to undo what happens nope, over here no, on my document. Down underneath the Wilmington, there's an undo. Go up to Wilmington, over to the right, uh, down. There was an undo right there somewhere. I just no, I think what that there, is, there no, that's a replace text. Okay. So if I select text over here, I can replace what's here by clicking replace. If I don't have text selected and I just click the plus sign on it or just oh. click it, it'll just drop it in. Um, the replace is really cool. Uh, that's one of the best ways. If you're, if you're gonna bring in logos or you're gonna replace like the Keller Williams logo that's on there, you can just click replace and it'll keep it the right size and all of that, which is nice. Um, yeah, I don't, so it did add Wilmington. I don't the, know how to get rid of it now. What about the top there where it has an undo? Right above, out of the gray box. Right above. Right here? Keep going up, 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 up. up. I'm at the top. Oh, no, no, oh, there. there. Over to the right a little bit. In that thing. Oh, yeah, the, the curve. Yeah, yeah, but that end. actually undoes the, any design uh, work on the right-hand okay. side. Well, yeah. I'm glad I asked anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, that, you're right. It's exactly why I tried clicking it, too, because I was like, mm -hmm. um, I wonder if I click Add to Library. Let's see. Oh, I could just change it. Hello. Yeah, yeah. but see, that, that text there is like in, a, in the form of an email. So when I go, I mean, when I went into it, it's got one of the other things. Hold on. Maybe. Yeah. When I go into my library and when it, I click it and it says text, very, very lightly, it says bringing home uh, results. And Wilmington, I typed Wilmington in the middle of that. So I guess I need to take all that out. And I'm just trying to see how do I update because I, I changed it to be hello there and now I can't seem to no hello there is not there Wilmington is there though hmm that's fascinating I'm right down you guys just gonna add to my very long list of questions that I got to figure out answers to um hmm okay what I want to know is add edit it didn't, add, it didn't add to mine. I wonder if it's because um, you already have your maximum. Like, I, well, I don't think it'll let me add another one because when I opened it, when I clicked add to library again, it just brought me to the Wilmington one. How many do you have in your library of text right now? Nine. That's why. So nine is the max. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Right. Yeah. I'll go back and do that later. Thanks. Text to library. Yeah, and I'll work on getting an answer to that too. There's probably a so hack. Kelly, for it. how do we make how do we make this a landing page now? Well, you can't. This isn't a landing page. No, we're not because we're not designing a landing page in here. What we what we chose to design was something that's either going to be an image or a print. I can pull it into uh, landing pages and things like that, but you can't, when you want to create a landing page, you're not using a PDF to do that, right? Because nobody prints okay. a landing page. Yeah. I guess I was mixing up the titles, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Um, you, and I did run a, a create a landing page last week and the week before, so there's, there are recordings on um, the begin with Finnegan forward slash Carolina's command and the YouTube channel. Um, which I'm super excited. Hopefully by the end of today, I'll have a um, uh, a vanity domain for that. So it'll be easier. It's all about vanity. Hmm? It's all about vanity. Yeah. yeah. It'll be uh, carolinascommand.com eventually. Yeah. So I, um, I'm having an issue with, my, with some of my logos. I've, I've got some that... Uh, Fiverr created for me that are PNG and they key just fine. Um, I have others, well, they key on everything else that I use them for. They key on on um, uh, Canva, they key on, uh, I, I don't have a problem superimposing the logo over anything. 
except the logos that I've imported into command, which is the exact same logos, but command doesn't like them for some reason. So be, be, uh, be specific with me though. If you mean like when you put them on an ad campaign in Facebook, like the Facebook campaigns, it creates a white box under them. It does that for everybody. It doesn't matter if it's PNG or not. So I did uncover that. It will not give you a transparent background. It creates a white box under them. That is by design. On Facebook? Yes. Okay. But if I, but if I use the same graphic and I create a, something in Canva, like my, like my little daily graphics that, that you've seen me do, um, I, if I use that exact same logo in command, it comes in with a white square behind it and won't, and won't cover uh, or won't, I call it key. It's an old TV term. Um, and so you added it into here, this logo section. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yep. does it look like this when you bring it in or does it look like this? It looks like that, but anywhere else it would look like that above. Now I have some that came from Fiverr before I, before I redid my logo that do come in like the one on the top that has no background but it says Robert Flynn Realtor Broker. It doesn't say Robert Flynn, Flynn Realty Group. Right. Interesting. Um, PNGs. Can you, um, Robert, I'd be happy to play with it for you, but you're gonna need to email me um, okay. the logos and your login. Okay. Yeah. My login to command? Yeah, because I'm gonna be you. I'm just gonna log in as you, see what, see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and then if we determine that that's a bug, then well, we'll need to submit it to support. But I won't be able to do that until later, like tonight. Okay, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I was gonna try to show you what I had done, but I'm okay. the, the... That looks, it looks pretty cool. I can see what you're talking about with the logo though. And I like the icons, I, I can dig it. And I wanna see that. Yeah. Is that gonna be saved in your library when I log in as you? Uh, yeah. Cool. I'll just be downloading that to my computer. Binder's fee. Let me save it to my library. Other questions on this. I'm gonna peek at chat too, you guys, cause I think that I may have missed something, but I know, I know Ross was looking too. Ross, you're still with us, right? You didn't drop off, you didn't run away? No, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you for being here, by the way. Um, let's see. Was there anything that came up in here, Ross, that everybody should hear or that, um, that you got I've stuck seen. on? Okay. Not that I've seen um, so far. Okay. I do see where Toby, you had asked um, the benefit of creating a doc like this in command versus like in like a PowerPoint. I think it's um, again about level of comfort and how you'd want to use it. Um, I like PowerPoints because I can convert to an image really fast and I'm, and I'm fast in it because uh, I've been building everything in PowerPoint for, for years. Whereas other people build in Publisher and I can't stand it because of the snap two grids and everything it just makes me crazy. It doesn't need to tell me where I want to drop something. I know where I want to drop it. Um, However, the benefit to me actually getting as, com as confident and comfortable working in command instead of PowerPoint is that it's all then sitting in my design library for me to pull into uh, within the same platform to pull into um, uh, campaigns and emails um, and just to be generally available in the platform. Because if I'm ever, if I'm out and about, if I'm whenever we get to travel again, um, I don't have my computer, so I don't have Microsoft PowerPoint with me on a computer that I'm working on. If it all lives in, in the command platform, I don't need any software other than what's in that platform. I don't ever have to need a Microsoft Office or anything else. I can continue to do me and everything I need to do inside the platform without needing additional software. What's Lori sharing? I have Adobe CS if you want me to play with, but yeah, mm, yes. Um, so she could definitely pull out your backgrounds too. Uh, I have a PS or CS3 on my other computer, but Lori's probably faster at it because she was like, you know, she like did that for a living. Well, and it's puzzling because um, Fiverr built both of them for me, uh, mm -hmm. and I, it, it and it and it works in Canva and it works in 
every other every other place that I try to use the application, or, or every other try place I try to use the logo, it just doesn't work in command. Yeah. And do you think it's possible that it's not actually replacing when you go to put it in your library that you've reached your max of what's in the library and so it's not actually in there? It no, because I deleted like them. I deleted them all. Oh. Uh, thinking, thinking that I'd gotten the wrong version of it or something and I deleted all of them and then I thought, well, let me add this older one and it works. So it's just, it's puzzling. Hmm. Interesting. Hey, Kelly, it's Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Did you say something about being able to change the background color or the background on this? Actually, you know what, honey, I didn't try on this document. Let's see if I can. Let's see. Um, so it looks like converting it to an image box. So if I were to convert that to an image box, then I can get rid of the box. <laughs> or not. What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> okay, hold on. Control Z, control Z. Oh. I know. Hold on. I'll just hit undo <laughs> for a second. Because I know there's there's gotta be a way here. So let's see. I want let me just try deleting that. It's highlighted. Because mm -hmm. if we bring in, like if we brought in a PDF that had a blue background and we didn't want it to be blue, there's gotta be a way to do it. So let's just play for a second. I can't, can I drag? No, let's see. Hey Ross, have you tried this yet? No, I haven't tried that, but the only thing I would think of is just downloading a, another image that's uh, the color that you want. Oh, you mean just like, like if I wanted a white background? Yeah. Mm, that's so smart. just downloading a white image and replacing it. Just or, a, yeah. Color. Or just take like a Word doc and turn it into an image even because the yeah, Word doc is going to be a white background. Um, it's weird now that I've converted it to the image though that I can't delete it. Yeah, I haven't played around with it that much. It says that I can reposition it. So I can't drag it off though. That's fascinating. Huh. I love the center line. That's brilliant. What if, can I delete it now? No. What if I did, it won't let me resize it? No. That's interesting. Hmm. You stumped me, Jenny. Oh, governors. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you say that thing above the gray box over to the left is what gets rid of the image that you created? The, like a, go backwards, but yeah, that thing. Yeah, this one has taken it back to gray, but I can't, what I'm trying to figure out is if there's so a way. Are, Kelly, if you replace it with your image, does that work? Like just your picture that's over there? Does it make you the background? Let me try. So let's try. So I'm going to select the image because we need a big, big my face here. That doesn't sound good, but that's all right. Let's get rid of that. Let's try it. Let's try. We're going to replace it with that. Jeez. Wow. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. So That's how you do it. And okay. you guys can see like the little bits of gray in there before I just let it go. It's crazy. All right. I, I need to get rid of that really fast, but let's that, just see. Can I delete it? That, I can't even get my face <laughs> off of it now, you guys. That is do. Real do. Right there. That is oh, probably make it smaller if you want. Undo. Well, I'm trying, but it won't let me. Mm -mm. Undo. Oh, well, wait a minute. Over to the right, I saw like things that were in front and back. You know how boxes are in front. There was something over to the right, upper right. That had so, yeah, I can. Oh, wait. Remove background. Uh, all back. that did was, man, that was a tease, but that was really awesome. Let's try this. Sally <gasps> mm, is the smartest person on this call. So now it looks like it's got, okay. So it's taken the background off completely. It won't let me change the color. However, it did remove it. Whenever you guys see images that look like these checkboxes, what that's saying is it's a transparent background. So right. we could lay this right now on top of anything if we save it as a PNG. What I'm thinking though, is that we could do a shape. Yep. And yeah. Drag Absolutely. it up there and then we're gonna put it come on there and we're going to change the color of it to 
Um, Yellow. What I really want is white. Um, let's go all the way up here. All the way up there. FFF. Why did it not do it? Come on. Fill color. Oh, yeah, to click apply. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to hit apply. Hang on. I'm getting there. I don't want the dropper. I want that. Apply. Good. It's done so that I need to move it to the back. See over the right trash can to the left. Yeah. And then I'm going to arrange it, send it to back. Back. All the way to the right. Yeah. Send to the bottom. Okay. Now this one, I wonder can we remove the background here? No, I can remove the whole thing. Hmm. Uh, you can use an image as your background. <coughs> no. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. So that means you guys are going to want to be really thoughtful when you're using things that have a solid color background. If it's just got like a box on it, you'll probably be able to delete those. When it's the whole background, it's going to take some work to get rid of it but it may pull images and perceive those images to have that color background as well as just the background itself. Do you pull this in on by themselves and work with it just like you did the virtual high? You know, Might, yeah, or take it off altogether and then go grab a different icon or dump the icon altogether. I tell you what, I'm learning you guys. You just play all day long in here. Although we only have nine minutes left before we have, I've got to prep for the next one. At 3.30 today, we're doing Facebook campaign and we have a different teacher. Brad Kiger, the team leader out of um, somewhere. <laughs> oh man. Um, Tiger Lance. Greens, Winston, Salem. I think it's Maybe. Greensboro. Greensboro. It's Greensboro. Yeah, I was in the right area. That area. Okay. Um, yeah, he's awesome. He's going to come and teach how to build a Facebook campaign and share Nick's. And I will just um, try not to screw him up. He's got a show on Netflix called Kiger King. <laughs> right. I've heard everybody's watching that. Um, I've yeah, not tried yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. It's everywhere. It is. Yeah. I don't, I, I can't, I don't like the idea of getting into something like that. I don't like people keeping um, exotic animals in cages. Um, that's just me. Um, what else guys? Eight more minutes. Any more questions? And you guys want to stump me with something else? Cause that was kind of fun trying to figure that out. <laughs> Anything else we want to do with it? I, I, I know someone was asking earlier about a, using it for a landing page. You could save it as an image and then add the image mm -hmm. to a landing page. Yes. Um, or to a page for your site as well. Yes. Yes, sir. When you do a landing page, and this is, I'm sure the answer to this is no, you can't take an image like this, but it's a JPEG. It has to be a JPEG, right? And then can you add it to a landing page and then put the, the what do you call it? The link can't go on top of the JPEG or the, it has to go. I yeah, so you couldn't, you couldn't link to it, uh, I don't think, but it would just be a static image that you could make, fill the whole page up with, with just the image. Right. Like your whole page could be whatever image you've created, or you could link to the image, like if the image, like if it's a document, like if you downloaded a PDF and you wanted your virtual um, home buying program to be a document that somebody could download from your website, you can link um, to the PDF, you're going to put it on your Google Drive and open it up for anyone who has the link. And then you're going to um, write an href code link. So if you don't know how to do hyperlinks, uh, what, how to use HTML for hyperlinks, if you Google HTML hyperlink, it'll give you the HTML that you're going to use. You're going to copy and paste it. And then you're just going to make the changes based on where your document lives on your drive. And there are a couple of videos about that. Since I'm sharing the screen with you guys, I also wanted to show you the article 
Remember earlier I told you answers.kw.com. So I went to KW Answers, Command Support, and typed in the word designs. Or you could type in the words import a PDF and come to the article, which walks you through what we just did together. Screenshot, step by step, talks you through it. And because they're all, these articles are linked together in like a, a digital encyclopedia, if you will, it would then tell you, okay, now you've got it up in there, go to this article, click here to learn how to use the print and social design editor. So it will take you through, it will take you through every step. These articles are phenomenal, you guys. Because um, I'll watch a video, like I'll watch Marty do something. And maybe I have it running on this computer over here. And I'll be trying here and I'll be like, wait. Because sometimes having a step-by-step -step with screenshots is easier. So answers.kw.com, you guys, is a wonderful resource. They're constantly making articles. Now Paul Polanski, because you can see it's uh, written by KW Paul, he is now writing articles for everything that is before it launches. So that when, when something launches on a Tuesday, the article's launching with it. The article's going live as soon as a new functionality goes live. Whereas they were staggered a little bit before, something would go live and, and the article would be like a week later. Like, how do you do it? Now he's, they're all timing it really perfectly. This is really starting to get exciting. Yeah. It's cool. It's really cool. Thank you so much for Thank showing. Thank you, Sally. I always appreciate you on these calls. You always ask good questions and um, you're very positive. As is Jenny and Robert. <laughs> Go, <Governor>. Jenny from Godwin. <laughs> um, I think I think we were the Hornets at Fred Lynn. I think. I'm pretty sure we were the Hornets. Any other questions, you guys? We've got four more minutes. Kelly, did you see my private message? Can you email me that stat thing? Oh, um, hang on, I'm pulling it up. Actually, why don't you just post it where you um, post the other one? Where are you going to post it? On your site? Yeah, um, I posted a couple things on my site. I tried linking to a whole Google folder and it wasn't working. So I'm going to have to play with that a little bit more. Um, post a two what, is, what is your site that has all this? Uh, begin with Finnegan. Here, I'll write it in there for everybody. There's two places you can go to get the videos. Mm. When I type that in, I got some movie. Hang on. Um. All right, so that is my website where all the training videos are. And then the YouTube channel because they're really on both. It just depends on kind of what you're using if you um, if you're on your computer, you can hit either one and it won't matter. Um, the website page though is where I've been um, and will successfully link to a whole folder of stuff for you guys. It's not the videos per se, but it's like the documents that we've used in the past. Um, will that be the documents? That will be available on the website page that I just put into everyone. I'm trying to think, is this my channel? I don't even know. Yeah, it should be. So why can't I get to my channel? Probably because everybody's watching me right now. I don't want to manage my account. I want to go, why doesn't it say my channel? Dismiss that COVID-19 thing. That might be messing you up. Dismiss. I don't think so. No. Just trying Maybe to get <laughs> Oh, I know why. Because it's I'm in the wrong channel. Um, that's why. Here we go. Aha. Yes. Okay. Here we go. I don't want to view as subscriber. Thank you. Oh, get rid of all of that. All of it. Pretty sure that's right. Yep. Okay. I'm going to send you guys a link to the channel. That's all the videos. Uh, where they just live in the channel. And the website above that is, I'll show you guys. And this will be the page I'm taking you to right now. Will become carolinascommand.com. 
Um, I'm just having a problem with my redirect right now. And I'm, I'm being rather frustrated with the actual page itself. It's not doing anything that I want it to do right now. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so here, all the videos, and then there's a couple of training resources right now, right here at the top, like the Keller Mortgage Page template if you want to create the Keller Mortgage Page, the Neighborhood Links template if you want to create that on your website. Um, I had featured listings up. I took it down because it's coming, and it'll be beautiful, and you don't have to touch it, and it'll actually be here. We had hoped it would go out this week. It didn't make it because um, – the app store is still waiting to approve the app updates. So we'll probably be next week where you'll be able to add featured listings to your website and those will automatically become collections for your clients in their um, app and on their websites, um, like on lane, like your website, if they go log in as them, which is super cool. Um, but I will add to this, Toby, I'll put um, the virtual buyer and the market stats to PDFs that are up. I'll add them here because I can add individual documents. I just can't, for whatever reason, it will not link to the whole folder. It does not like it on this page. Every time I try it, it makes the whole page go wrong. So, okay, so I'm, I'm probably writing the code wrong. Posted links, right? I, in the in the chat, I sent you to this page and to the YouTube channel, right? And then you want, I see someone just asked for answers.kw.com. Um, you have it, answers.kw.com. <laughs> I'm not sure what oh, you're asking me. Um, in the Pivot web page, or uh, sorry, Facebook page, Maria Morell uploaded several, there are several different versions of the stat uh, slide, if you will. Mm -hmm. so I spent three hours converting it to a JPEG and making it. It was way harder than this, but there's several different versions in there as well. Yeah, there are a ton of them. There aren't a lot of PDFs in there. So when you pull them down, they're going to be images. And what you need to do is print it to PDF. Yeah, most of them, that when I started, I did it probably a week ago, mm -hmm. they were PDFs and I oh, had to convert okay. them. And yeah, when I went in and pulled them down this, this weekend, they were all images rather than PDFs. And so I was like, oh, fine, I'll just create my own. Uh, I use theirs for inspiration, but. And, and you said when you were talking about logos, somebody asked about their logo is transparent background, but it wasn't coming over and you said all logos are in a white box? Only for command um, campaigns. So okay. when you create a campaign, an advertising campaign, it automatically puts that logo with a white background on it. It's just part of what is happening inside of the platform. Even if your logo is um, the base logo inside your marketing profile is a transparent background, mm -hmm. it's going to add a white box under it. Okay. It's by design. Um, I, I don't love it. Um, I've expressed that opinion <laughs> to um, others. And I imagine it, there's a, I'm a phrase that all of us know so very well, which is everybody's got one. So, um, if that is going to be changed, it's going to be because a mass amount of people say to change it, not because one RTT says, I don't like it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate you guys. Okay, so we're back on at 3.30 with um, Brad Kiger, not Tiger, Kiger. And he is going to teach and I'm going to be there to um, answer questions and, and help whatever he needs to do how to build a Facebook campaign. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate you. Another excellent class, sweetheart. Take care. Thank you, honey. All right, y'all. See you later. Oh, Kelly. Yes, sir. Um, I think Tuesday um, is going to be an office day for me. Um, and oh. I'm going to I'm going to take the desk apart. Okay. The one that's in your office. Right. Yeah. Um, Are you offering to deliver it? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I, I want to get it out of there. So maybe we can talk about that. Okay. Um, I'll send you this Tuesday. email where you can, and I'll ask you the question at the bottom and you can answer them. Okay. Cause I mean, I might could, um, come get it too. As long as I, you don't really want, you don't want to be within six feet of me. I'll be honest. I have no idea what I have. So, um, I have okay. good days and bad days. I have days I feel okay and other days where I don't feel okay. So, mm 
Um, but I do, I do want to ask. Yeah. How is, how is Peyton feeling? They're good. They're, they're really congested. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you I don't like the way it sounds earlier in the day, you know, like, but it still sounds like it's upper chest. It's not lower. Yeah. My allergies are messing me up and I can't, you know, it's like, when is that going to stop? So. I know. Never. It just started. <laughs> Our green season has just started. Yeah. It's pretty bad out there. All right, love. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, everybody. Kelly, see did you, you at see 3 you? What'd you say, Ross? I sent you a chat message. I didn't know if you saw it or not. I'll go look now. No, it's back up. They fixed it as of this morning. It should be back it's up working? in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just found that out um, on the RTT call that it okay. is up and running again. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. Um, I'll see you in a little bit. I'll be here for that. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I think Brad's going to pop on here in a minute because we just wanted to talk through it, but I'm going to leave it running and then see if he pops in. Yeah, no worries. <sighs> Oh. <sighs>